This is my test video for my spindle PID control. I built an encoder enclosure that you can see installed here. This piece, the encoder connects. Uh, let's see if I can get underneath there. Right in the back there, and I put some magnetic sensors around the spindle. I have some detailed picture uh, pictures of that in my report. Um, goes back to my new controller that I just built back there. Um, currently have an oscilloscope set up. And it, oops, if I rotate the spindle here, you can see it pulsing as I go around. Uh, we'll be able to see the waveform once it's running. I'm just going to go through quickly how I tuned my PID controller. I had to uh, pretty much design the whole thing from scratch. There were some uh, how to's and things online, but uh, machines are so different that it really, the ones, all the example ones that they had uh, did not work very well. I also had to build this whole custom panel over here uh, for Linux CNC so that I can input my values in real time and uh, see what my output, uh, see how they would change the output that way. I don't have to go in and program or, you know, change the help file, close everything, start everything back up. You know, I can just enter the values in and immediately they will update in real time. So the way that I tuned it was using the Ziegler Nichols method. So the first step is to set your uh, integral and your uh, derivative gains to zero. Uh, and also the PID max output there is the uh, controller output U of T. Uh, you have to, s I had to set a maximum on there otherwise it would over spool and cause the uh, poles to slip on the motor actually as it was starting up. So uh, putting a max output value for whenever you have a step input is really handy. It makes a nice linear ramp to uh, get you up to your RPMs. But uh, 650 was what I found kind of experimentally to be um, still quick, but not have too much overshoot and also not um, uh, cause pole slippage on the motors. So let's go ahead and set these to zero. And... Alright, and then the first step is to, well, we'll start our spindle, and we'll just go up to uh, 1,000 RPM. Go. And you can see a little bit, that was just a, a pure proportional gain of 1.65, and that's not important just yet. Um, but you can see that it's kind of, it's it's right around there, 1,000 is kind of where this machine was tuned, which is why I picked that uh, RPM. Um, it just happened to be very close there. If I went up to like 2200, it'd be off by about 100 RPM. If I was down around 400, it'd be off by about 30 to 40 negative below. Um, but 1000 RPM is pretty close. Um, and with the proportional control, it kind of kind of brings it in. As you can see that the uh, with the PID feedback, it's kind of uh, fluctuating a little bit there. Um, 10, 20 RPM. And looking at our impulses, they all look good. So my um, encoder is working well and it looks like it's pretty stable not a lot of variance and so the first step of the Ziegler method is to start raising proportional gain until you see um, instability and the instability comes up as, in a, as, a, as a wave and I found it to be at 4.7 it just barely starts um, but at like 5 it'll, it'll, uh, it'll have a pretty good um, you can hear, kind of hear that You've entered, the machine's entered instability right there, and the way that we can kind of check, um, I bring that down to about 4.9, before it doesn't get, uh, start to go too unstable. But, so you can see it go in there, and the way that I checked it was with this HAL scope. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, force trigger this right now, because it's not... Uh, there we go. And so you can see a good clear waveform. Um, so what I did was I went just from point to point along here, especially on the falling edge, you can get a nice, real easy, clear points. Measured the wave distance from here to here. And, you know, I did it over multiple trials, and um, just checked what the uh, frequency was, and found that there's a... Uh, um, like the wavelength is approximately point, 
six, four, five seconds. So it's about, it's oscillating about uh, every 0.6 seconds is one full wavelength um, for its RPM. So using that, I use the uh, predetermined formulas that they had um, for the Ziegler-Nichols method, and they were um, pretty useful in tuning the machine. Uh, in the end, it kind of they they, they seem to be uh, in the ballpark, but still required some tuning. Um, go in the back. So I experimentally went through and found the the values that worked best for me, and. Uh, you know they're close. There was just a few things that I wanted, um, as far as my return to uh, you know, see what's up in that integral. It really settles down in there, and uh, let's see here. It's been my derivative, so it's point two. Point two. All right, and so there's my uh, PID settings that I decided to end up with. And if we go back to our oscilloscope here, um, let's go ahead and do a rising edge um, single. All right, so waiting for the trigger. So let's go ahead and stop the spindle. And we will do a 1000 again. We'll wait for everything to kind of wind down. Okay. And so go. Alright, and then see so how it came up on our house scope. There we are, and it looks like an overshoot. This one is about 180. Um, comes back to the select. Uh, right there's where it starts seeing everything. That's about 24 milliseconds of delay right there. And yeah, if we go up to see the overshoot, we're at. Commanded a thousand, and it's one eleven fifty nine at the high point there. So one hundred fifty nine RPM over, which is okay. Uh, this green line is the filtered output. I, I didn't use a filtered output into the PID controller because I didn't. I was afraid that that lag, as you can see, the the, the lag in time between um, the encoder pulses and the filtered values. I was afraid that would change the controller too much. Although I did add a small filter on this, which is the uh, uh, PID output so it filters it a little bit and then I set a maximum value on there also as you can see it, it maxes out at about 650 and it, it kind of bounced around right there at 650 um, but it still swung it up got in there and is um, pretty much settled out right there which is uh, just a little under two seconds so one point